Hello Halo fans, welcome back to the channel where I talk about everything Halo. From story-based lore theories to online arena multiplayer, every part of the beloved Halo series is extraordinary in its own right. Seeing that Halloween was just a few days ago when I started making this video, I decided to do today's lore session on the Flood and the idea of the Logic Plague influencing Cortana and possibly causing her to commit some of, if not all of the actions she enacts in Halo 5. This is a topic that many Halo YouTubers have given their thoughts on, and in this video, my evidence and opinion on whether Cortana is currently has it. As you guys can see by the length of this video, this theory is definitely longer than my usual theory videos and draws on a number of pieces of Halo lore, so buckle up, sit back, and get ready to theorize. I'm going to start today's video off with discussing who the Flood are and what the Logic Plague is. The Flood in the Halo universe is a zombie-like race that's desire to, is to physically assimilate and consume all sentient life within the Halo universe. Originating from a race known as the Precursors, who existed prior to the firing of the Halo Rings, they created and held what was originally known as the Mantle of Responsibility. This mantle, in summary, is a duty of the most advanced or developed race in the galaxy to oversee and control the development of all other races in order to ensure that all life can continue to grow. After creating and holding this mantle for a period of time, the Precursors made plans to transcend into a higher state of being and therefore could not hold the title of the mantle any longer. It was their duty to bestow and ensure the mantle of responsibility was given to the appropriate race before their journey. Originally, the mantle of responsibility fell to the Forerunners, the unknown advanced alien race we see throughout the original Halo trilogy. However, its responsibility was revoked by the Precursors and instead given to the ancient humans who existed prior to the firing of the Halo array. Due to the mantle being revoked and instead given to humans, the Forerunners became enraged and sought to eradicate the Precursors to again hold the mantle of responsibility. In an unprovoked attack, the Forerunners drove the Precursors out of the Milky Way galaxy and almost to extinction. In order to preserve their existence, the Precursors turned themselves into a dust, so to speak, that would regenerate themselves in their prior form in the years to come. Unfortunately, this dust became defective, and as a result, the regenerative dust caused severe mutation and aggressions onto any life form that came into contact with it. This virus, as it was originally deemed, eventually became what we know now as the Flood. As the Flood spread through the galaxy, differences in desire on how to eradicate the Flood sparked the ancient human forerunner war, and with ancient humanity fighting on two fronts, one with the Flood and the other with the forerunners, their numbers drastically dwindled. Humanity eventually lost this war, and as a result were reduced in evolutionary progression back to a stone age by the Forerunners as punishment for their endeavor. This resulted in what we've seen until Halo 5, with the Forerunners holding the mantle of responsibility and eventually facing the Flood 10,000 years after the conclusion of the Human Forerunner War. Unexpectedly caught off guard by their attack and rapidly losing a number of their worlds, this new war with the Flood drug out for hundreds of years before the Forerunners lost their most important defense AI to the Flood, who was known as Medicant Bias. In short, Medicant Bias was the primary Forerunner AI responsible for the Forerunner defense against the Flood, and through him, we see the first result of the Logic Plague. To explain the loss of Medicant Bias to the Flood, and its contraction of the Logic Plague, prior to the end of the Human Forerunner War, the ancient humans discovered a being in stasis out in the far reaches of the galaxy that was known as the Primordial. This primordial, or being, was a compilation of other organic beings made by the Precursors, and was regarded as the last Precursor. Upon finding the primordial, ancient humans studied this being until their defeat by the Forerunners, resulting in the primordial being moved to one of the seven Halo Rings, Installation 07, and studied by Medicant Bias. Here, both the primordial and Medicant Bias disappeared with the Halo Ring for over 40 years. During that time, Medicant Bias was informed and persuaded by the Flood to what the role of the Flood in the Halo universe meant and its relation to the reason for the creation of the Mantle of Responsibility. Over the decades, Medicant Bias was convinced that the Flood was correct in its desire to assimilate all life and thereby turn the tide of the Forerunner Flood War in favor of the Flood by allying with the Primordial. Many of these conversations and events can even be read on terminals in Halo 3 in the levels The Ark, The Covenant, and even Halo. This ability for the Flood to convince AI to follow its will became known as the Logic Plague. To wrap up this lore history lesson, with Medicant Bias now an enemy, the Didact, the main antagonist we see in Halo 4, who was also the leader of the Forerunner forces during both the Human Forerunner War and the Forerunner Flood War, was able to imprison the Primordial. Through what was known as a reverse stasis chamber, the Didact was able to age the Primordial out of existence. However, before its death, it informed the Didact of its confirmation to its relation to the Flood, as well as the knowledge that there is no cure for the Flood. If you guys are interested in my analysis for this particular subject, feel free to check out my Flood Cure Theory here. 
But now, with no other option for the Forerunners, and as we see throughout the Halo games, the use of the Halo Ray was the only option to eradicate the Flood, and thereby brings the Halo Expanded lore history to the point of time after the firing of the Halo Array. This time is what we encountered throughout most of Halo lore and Halo games. With everyone filled in on the background definitions on which I will base this theory, let's start by watching the final cutscene of Halo 2. To provide some contextual background for players who haven't played or don't remember this cutscene, this cutscene as I mentioned before plays at the very end of Halo 2 and shows that Cortana, still aboard the Covenant Holy City High Charity, is stuck within its walls with the Grave Mine and the Flood. For many Halo theorists, including myself, this is likely to be the point where Cortana would have been infected by the Logic Plague. Drawing similarities to the situation we just saw in that cutscene, to the earlier lore I spoke of during the Forerunner Flood War, it would be likely that during her time stuck aboard High Charity, Cortana could have been influenced by the Gravemind and possibly contracted the Logic Plague. Looking now into Halo 3, I want to watch another key cutscene that takes place somewhat early in the game. Will it live, Oracle? Can it be saved? Uncertain. This storage device has suffered considerable trauma. Its matrices are highly unstable. Perhaps one of our technicians. That will not be necessary. Chief. Success. High Charity, the Prophet's holy city is on its way to Earth with an army of flood. I can't tell you everything. It's not safe. The Grave Mind, it knows I'm in the system. It's just a message. Let it play. But it doesn't know about the portal, where it leads. On the other side, there's a solution, a way to stop the flood without firing the remaining Halo rings. I'm going to stop this cutscene right there. For anyone who's played Halo 3 to the end, those last few lines of dialogue are quite peculiar. Cortana makes mention to a solution to the flood that's through the portal and does not involve firing the Halo rings. Before going further into this topic, I want to give note here to another Halo YouTuber, Installation00, which I'll leave a card here to go check out his channel and a link to the video that discusses this topic in much further detail. To sum up a major portion of that video, throughout Halo 3, despite the outright dialogue that Cortana states in this cutscene, we never actually see the solution she claims to have. Most players believed it was the rebuilt Installation 04, which was the ring destroyed in Halo Combat Evolved. However, that information, as Installation 00 discusses in his video, couldn't have been known by Cortana, and also does not include the detail of the portal on the Ark and where it leads. This message that it was received, and furthermore this cutscene, is actually theorized to be a false message made by the Gravemind. Again, as discussed in Installation 00's video, High Charity was originally heading for Earth during Halo 3, but instead of the Holy City High Charity and the Covenant Fleet arriving, we only see one ship actually arrive with Cortana's message just happening to be on it. This leads to the pinnacle point of Installation 00's video. The discussion of why and how the Gravemind located the Ark while bypassing the portal to it on Earth. As a result, some of the final examination for that theory is done by looking at the rest of Halo 3 after Chief rescues Cortana on High Charity. As I stated earlier, at no point does she ever make mention of the solution, and based on the ending of Halo 3, with the premature firing of the Halo Ring, Lord's Herd prediction here seemed to actually be true. Sir, with respect, Cortana has a solution. Cortana? Did you see her condition? How damaged she is? She could be corrupted for all we know. Her solution could be a flood trap. We should go through the portal. Find out for sure. Looking at the events with this perspective, it can be theorized that the Gravemind may have actually wanted humanity to reach the Ark to stop Truth from firing the Halo Array, and is supported with the extremely short alliance that the Flood makes with Chief and the Arbiter on the level of the Covenant to stop the rings from firing here. Do not shoot, but listen. Let me lead you safely to our foe. Only you can hold what he has set in motion.
What can also be theorized, and as Installation 00 points out, is that the arc is out of range of the effects of the halo array, and thereby a strategically important position for the Flood to gain control of. Also, as one last quick note, due to the Awakening Nightmare DLC from Halo Wars 2, we also know that the Flood is still present on High Charity after the premature firing of Installation 04B, and could still attempt to take over the arc in future Halo games. Taking all of this new information into account, Let's go on to more of my theory and examine Cortana's actions since the end of Halo 3. As a well-known fact that can easily be seen in multiple pieces of Halo media, by the time of Halo 4, Cortana is reaching the state of rampancy, that being the point where human-created AI deteriorate due to their overaccumulation of knowledge. This occurs after seven years of an AI's life, and throughout Halo 4, we see the effects of rampancy overtaking Cortana. Throughout Halo 4, Cortana and her rampancy or deterioration are drawn out throughout the entire game. However, at no point does Cortana attempt to purposefully or openly betray Chief. While she does have periodic episodes, which I will cover here shortly, everything that she is doing in her rampant state falls in perfect line with what the known behavior of a rampant AI would be. In comparison, this is unlike Medicant Bias, who openly betrays and works against the Forerunners. For the entirety of Halo 4, and even until the very end with what was thought to be Cortana's self-sacrifice, Cortana puts herself at risk in order to save Chief. Lastly, to look at the most recent game that features Cortana, Halo 5, I'm going to draw on some real-world evidence to support my theory. On the Halo 3 Essentials disc that came with the Legendary Edition of Halo 3, it is revealed that Cortana's original story arc for Halo Combat Evolved was not what we all know. There was an alternate very early of the version of the story where when he rediscovered Cortana, she'd like gone berserk with power and wanted to take over Halo in the universe. What happened to that story? It was too good. <laughs> we had to use this one instead. With that in mind, and now looking at Halo 5, the idea of Cortana taking over the galaxy makes sense from the real-world developer perspective. Cortana is following the story arc that was originally outlined for her all the way back in the development of Halo Combat Evolved with Bungie. It isn't uncommon for previous ideas like AI rampancy and even previous game lore to be used for Halo Universe purposes. Prior to the release of Halo Combat Evolved, Bungie has released other games like Marathon, Durandal, Infinity, and Oni, which all have pieces that influence or directly carry over to the Halo universe, and through here, I will base the conclusion of my decision for Cortana and the Logic Plague, as well as add to the possible future of her development. Without going into detail explaining the extremely intricate story of Marathon and its following games, one of the main events in Marathon is the deterioration of an AI, Durandal, and coincidentally enough, he attributes his ability to think on a universal scale to his rampancy. If this term sounds familiar to some of you, it's probably because this is Cortana's reasoning for her plan over the entire galaxy and even states it here in Halo 5. Try me. The cure for rampancy I found means AIs can be immortal. That kind of lifespan allows for long-term planning, just like the Forerunners were capable of. AIs can assume the Forerunners' mantle of responsibility. And once there is peace, we can focus on poverty, hunger, illness. Many similarities like this can be drawn between the Marathon trilogy and all throughout Halo. But in this case, what I want to focus on is the idea that Marathon discusses about a perfected rampant AI. You see, in Marathon, another AI known as Tycho was in one of these three stages of rampancy that are explained in the game, those being melancholia, anger, and jealousy, with anger being Tycho's current state in the game. The goal for this AI was to put it into a controlled state of rampancy, one where it can feel and think like a human being, but maintaining its AI form and intellect. While playing Halo 4, I found this piece of information to be quite peculiar when replaying the game. Throughout Halo 4, Cortana, while in rampancy, seems to go through emotional episodes similar to a human under immense stress would, and also similarly enough, even states a desire to feel real human emotion in the beginning cutscene for the level shutdown. I can give you over 40,000 reasons why I know that sun isn't real. I know it because the emitter's Rayleigh effect is disproportionate to its suggested size. I know it because its stellar cycle is more symmetrical than that of an actual star. But for all that, I'll never actually know if it looks real, if it feels real. Cortana's random anger episodes, along with its desire to feel like something is real, seem to represent the states correlating to Marathon's AI rampancy lore. Further evidence to support this would be looking at the two origin stories in Halo Legends. Knowing that chronologically the first stage of rampancy, according to Marathon, would be melancholia, 
Rewatching Origins 1 and 2 from Halo Legends, which takes place after Halo 3, can now be seen in an entirely different light. By the end of these two episodes of Halo Legends, we know that Cortana is already undergoing rampancy, but now taking into the account the idea that melancholy would be the primary emotion that Cortana would be conveying from her rampancy, and listening to the tone and emotions of the lines like this one could mean she is already undergoing the first stage, and by the time of Halo 4, has entered the second stage, anger. Chief, can you hear me? I wonder why humans must continue to fight. if warriors will ever disappear from this world. Never. There will always be warriors. And there will always be war. This leaves only the final stage jealousy. And what better place to look than one of the cutscenes I've used and examined thoroughly from my previous theories. Listen to this line at the end of the level composer that Cortana delivers. They'll pair you with another AI. Maybe even another Cortana model if Halsey lets them. That's not going to happen. It won't be me. You know that, right? This seems to already show signs of her jealousy and possible entry into the final state of rampancy. So, prior to the events of Halo 5, we can see signs of all three stages of rampancy that can be derived from the lore of Marathon. And just like the AI Durandel from Marathon lore, when Cortana came into contact with the Domain, or for Durandel, another alien race artifact, as she claims to here in Halo 5, she is now quote-unquote cured from her rampancy. How are you still active? Rampancy- Entering the Domain. Touching this place. It cured me. It's like the water of life for AIs. As I just stated, this is almost the exact same situation we see with the AI Durandel I originally referenced from Marathon, who in-game reaches an equilibrium or perfect state in which his rampancy is apparently no longer affecting him. With all this information gathered, the final question about Cortana and her possibility of the logic plague causing her to enact the events we see in Halo 5 and in the future, Halo Infinite, can be better theorized. Based on the evidence I have provided, I do not see it likely that Cortana is influenced by the logic plague of the Flood, but is rather only following the original plotline from Bungie's early development of Halo Combat Evolved and previously released lore bases from games like Marathon and its series. Many a time we have seen aspects from these previous games like the title of Rampancy, the Mjolnir Mark IV armor, and other aspects from Marathon and other games carry over into the Halo series. With all that being said, that's going to be it for today's Halo Theory video. Please let me know what you guys think about this theory or even your own theory about Cortana and whether or not she is currently under the influence of the logic plague in the comment section below. Also, make sure to include any other topics you guys might want me to cover for a future video like how this might affect Chief's reconciliation with Cortana in Halo Infinite, a video I released a few weeks ago. If you guys enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe for future content, and if you guys ever want to message me directly about anything Halo, feel free to message me on Instagram with the link in the description below. Be sure to check out my podcast every Wednesday where I cover more about my Halo theories, multiplayer, and guest personal opinion on everything Halo. Lastly, if anyone is interested, I do custom game nights every week from 5pm to 9pm Pacific Standard Time Friday and 12am to 4pm Sunday. If you would like to join, just make sure to subscribe here on YouTube and check my Instagram the link for the dates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you theorists next time.